Hello, Zero Empires here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the top five Paladin Civs in Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition. The Paladin is one of the most iconic units in Age of Empires 2. It's also very exclusive, with only 11 out of the 35 civilizations being able to train it. They are incredibly powerful and make for a very cost efficient and population effective unit in the Imperial Age. You'll find that in competitive team game matches, at least one player from each team will take a Paladin Civ for that late game strength. In the fifth spot are the Cumans, one of the brand new civs that came with DE. The Cumans benefit from 10% faster cavalry starting in the Feudal Age. This is really useful for the Paladins since it will help them to get around the map a little faster and more importantly get from your base to your enemy base that much sooner as well. The Cumans get all of the blacksmith upgrades so their Paladins can be fully upgraded and with the 10% extra movement speed it plants them firmly in 5th place since all of the other civs have, in my opinion, a better bonus for their paladins. In 4th place are the Huns. They and their allies benefit from 20% faster working stables. This means that they train paladins 20% faster, but they also complete upgrades in the stable 20% faster as well. Completing the Cavalier and Paladin upgrades back to back takes about 4 minutes and 30 seconds, but with the Huns this is cut down to just 3 minutes and 46 seconds. Include these time savings with the 5 seconds saved every single time you train a Cavalry unit and it does start to add up. In addition, this bonus also extends to Hun allies, which is a little bit better than just keeping it all to yourself. This is only useful if you actually have the resources to queue the upgrades and train the units though, something which only very skilled players would really be able to maximise and make the time savings worthwhile. The Persians get fully upgraded paladins that also benefit from their team bonus, which gives knights plus two attack versus archers. This doesn't really help in many situations, since paladins have such high attack and ranged units generally have very low HP, so this means they'll still die in the same number of hits with or without the bonus. The place where it makes the biggest difference in the Imperial Age is against ranged units with more HP, such as the Plumed Archer, Chuko Nu or even the Camel Archer. Against these units, the Persian paladins take one less hit to kill their enemy. Against many units, such as the Arbalest, Longbowman or Rattan Archer, the bonus has no effect and they still die in the same number of hits as regular Paladins. This bonus is really situational and often doesn't really do anything at all. However, the Persians also benefit from faster Town Center work rate, which increases each age. This allows them to train villagers faster and even research the Imperial Age faster compared to other civs. This speed boost makes the Persians excellent boomers, who also get every upgrade in the game. For this reason, I have to place them slightly ahead of the Huns, who simply have the faster stables. For the last 20 years, the Franks have had the number one spot, but recently they've been knocked down into second place. Having a 20% extra HP on their cavalry gives the Franks a huge advantage compared to other Paladin Civs. Since the Paladin already has such a high health pool, 20% extra gives the Franks an additional 32 HP. Given that heavy cavalry is so expensive to upgrade and create, this extra health goes a long way to make your Paladins last longer in battle and makes them more affordable overall. Franks and their allies also benefit from two additional line of sight on their cavalry, a bonus which gives them a little boost, but doesn't really compare to their first bonus in terms of how much stronger their paladins become. Supporting paladin production requires a lot of farms, and the Franks even have a bonus to help with this too. They get their farm upgrades for free each time they advance to the next age. This not only helps them to save resources, but also to support a large farm economy with fewer woodcutters. The Lithuanians take the top spot due to sheer strength. 
they completely eclipse the Frankish Paladins, which firmly take second place. This is thanks to the Lithuanian Relic bonus, which gives their cavalry plus one attack for each relic collected, up to a maximum of five. If you're able to collect five relics, then your Paladins will have a massive plus nine attack damage. This gives them just one less attack than an elite War Elephant. Of course, it's unlikely that you'll be able to secure all five relics, but even with just two relics, the Lithuanian Paladins are able to beat the Franks in equal numbers. If you're ever playing a team game and there's a Lithuanian player in the match, then you definitely want to make sure they get as many relics as possible, or deny as many relics as possible if they're on the other side. If you're unable to get two or more relics, then the Franks may have the top spot back. It's never easy with this game. And so, in conclusion, which Civ is best Paladin Civ? It depends. But it's probably the Lithuanians. Of course, the ultimate would be to play as the Lithuanians with the Huns, Persians and Franks teammates, collect 5 relics and you have an absolute unit that is created 20% faster, deals 2 bonus damage to archers and can see 2 tiles further away. And I'll leave you with that in mind. As I say, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.